Hello, today we're going to talk about American folk tales. Uh, folk tale is an old story that's been told again and again over many generations by word of mouth. These tales or stories usually have lovable characters that we can relate to and they are meant to entertain us or teach us a lesson, teach us about our history, or even explain how um, the mountains were created. Many folk uh, tales were used to scare or discipline children to teach them a moral lesson. Now some of these tales are based on real historical people and events, but over time as they're told, um, the lives of these real people are embellished, so uh, they have untold strength and then they have skills uh, beyond the average person, and they become legend. Now, um, on this map behind me, we see that the United States has all kinds of folklore and folk tales. There is Paul Bunyan, there's Calamity Jane, John, John, Johnny Appleseed, John Henry, Picos Bill. Uh, let's start up here with Paul Bunyan. Now Paul Bunyan uh, is seen with his blue ox named Babe and they are six stories high. They are giants. And it is told that it took five huge storks to deliver the gigantic baby Paul to his parents. When Paul Bunyan was older and he was traveling all over the United States, it says that he drug his ax across Arizona and he created the Grand Canyon. And one day when he was out camping and he needed to extinguish his fire, he took big rocks and piled them on top of each other and he created Mount Hood up here. So the mighty lumberjack, um, was he a real person, Paul Bunyan? Historians believe that Paul Bunyan is based on an actual lumberjack from Canada, French Canadian, named uh, Fournier. Now this man had uh, large hands and he was very tall. He was over six feet tall. And this is a time when the average man was more like 5'5". Five five. Next, let's look at the legend of Annie Oakley. As legend has it, Annie Oakley was a tough little girl who began hunting in the backwoods of the Ohio frontier when she was only nine. And it wasn't long before she gained the reputation of being handy with a rifle. It is said that Annie uh, could shoot a target behind her using the reflection in the mirror. At 30 paces, she could slice a playing card in half and puncture it five or six times before it hit the ground. And at 90 feet, she could hit a dime tossed in the air. In the 1950s, Annie Oakley was portrayed as an outgoing, carefree cowgirl, but the real Annie Oakley faced real hardship and could be seen as modest or shy. The real Annie Oakley was born Phoebe Ann Moses, August 13th in 1860, from a family of Quakers that migrated to Pennsylvania. She was a six of seven children, and after her father died, her mother was unable to support the family, and Annie had to go live in the, the county poorhouse for children. But when Annie grew a little older, she returned to her mother's family and began supporting the family by hunting and trapping. She could shoot, a, she could shoot quail and pheasants from very far away, and she built a, a reputation as being an excellent shot. When Annie was 16, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show came to town, and the star of the show, Frank Butler, announced a shooting contest um, to show their skills against him, and Annie entered the contest. Uh, but Frank Butler gave her no mind because he just seen her as this little girl, um, actually teenage girl by this time. But she beat Frank Butler, but she also uh, fell hopelessly in love with him, and later they would marry. So Annie would become part of Wild Bill's uh, West show, and he, she traveled all over entertaining crowds with her marksmanship. Okay, so let's look over here at Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed is the official folk hero of Massachusetts. Uh, uh, folk tales portray Johnny as a wanderer who had a very unkempt look and he wore a pot on his head. He always carried a sack full of apple seeds to plant and walked barefoot all year round. On one occasion, Johnny Appleseed ran 26 miles through the forest to Mount Vernon uh, to warn settlers of an Indian attack by blowing on his powder horn. 
Aid reached the town within a few days and the settlers were spared thanks to Johnny Appleseed's bravery. The real person uh, that this legend is based on is a man named Johnny Chapman, born in Massachusetts on September 26, 1774. Chapman grew up in the midst of the American Revolution and instead of wandering all over the United States dropping apple seeds, he was actually an orchardist and he grew fruit trees, apple trees. In his travels through Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Chapman would obtain large plots of land and grow uh, seeds. When the seeds uh, grew into trees, he would sell the thriving orchard to settlers and that was how he made a living. It is said that he traveled over 100,000 square miles over the Midwestern wilderness and the prairie. Okay, those are the American folk tales I wanted to share with you today. And we do have a craft to grow your own apple tree and I have started one here. Now all the supplies and directions that you will need are listed below this video. Now it does take a long time for an apple tree to uh, mature. So if you wanted to try to grow other things, uh, you can try growing a jalapeno pepper plant like I've done here. I've already had a pepper come off of it. And I also have done a sunflower, sunflower seed, and it's gone, gotten pretty tall. Now, as for the apple seed craft, you can pick up a craft packet from the Monday morning market here at our, our uh, Topeka Public Libraries Farmers Market on Monday. Thank you. Bye.